We're interrupting this program in order to begin our regularly scheduled broadcast. Thanks for watching the Lit TV Network. Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I am your host, Kim Warner, and I have um, a young lady that's special to me. She's worked with me in uh, many endeavors coming on with, with me. Her name is Ashley Townsend Daniels. And so uh, we want to welcome her into the studio. Ashley, where in the world are you? How are you today? <laughs> All right. I am in New Jersey suffering with the winter storm coming through, which I'm not looking forward to, but I'm so, so happy to be here with you, Miss Kim. I'm so grateful for you internally, externally, everywhere. You know it. I love you to life. You are my mentor, and I'm just always so grateful for you. Right. Amen. I'm so grateful to have you in my life and see the development that you have um, made throughout the years that we've been working together. Um, tell us a little bit about your business, the name and all. And thank God that I can reach out to those that are in different city, states and countries. As you said, you are in New Jersey. Go. <laughs> so my business is titled Business Grace. It's actually named after my grandmother and my daughter. Um, and it's a business coaching and consulting business where I meet with people and I talk to you about your dreams, your aspirations with becoming an entrepreneur, but not just there. I'm going to help you create your foundation for your business because we are nothing if we don't have strong foundations. In addition to that, we can also say your existing business and you're like, something's happening and I don't understand why all, everything should be running smoothly. And I go, no problem. Let's take a look at everything piece by piece. I'm an objective view. This is personal to you. This is your business, your baby. So here I am, objective, looking at it. And I go, oh, there might be a little area here. We could tighten up. We could figure out what's going on here. Or maybe we need to look at this and revisit this here. So that's what I do. And that's what I'm here for. But it doesn't also stop there because some people want to go into the career world. So I can do resumes. I can do cover letters. Um, I also work with Ms. Kim now in editing a book, which I didn't even know would be something that I could step into because I always thought of myself more of just a writer, not an editor, but you do both hand in hand, even when you're writing yourself. So there's that also too. And as business grace evolves, I will evolve and they're hand in hand because it's my business and it grows with me. So. Okay, so the book, the book, let's go ahead, you brought it in, let's bring it in and let's talk about something that John White um, spoke of and asked me questions on. I keep going back to the covenant and the covenant is in different areas. Like I feel that you and I have a covenant because your strong points is what I uh, call into view when I need work done, writing, documentation, and editing, like in the book. Even in conversations, your ability to look at um, things from a finite um, aspect and then turn it into an infinite uh, perspective, which means that finite could be linear, but infinite means that there's limited possibilities. So um, we have a, a whole lot of people that we work with, but this is your day mm -hmm. and my day. So in the covenant area, I brought up scriptures um, and I'm going to stick to Noah today. Next week, um, we're looking at Joseph. Uh, but the key aspect of a covenant is we talked about with John um, in Deuteronomy 5. That's where you begin to build the covenant and the covenant is in the heart. So when we go into um, Genesis 9, I want to read a few scriptures so that we can be on point with our book and with um, the covenant. So Genesis 9, the first verse says, and God said, this is the sign of the covenant. I'm making between me and you and every living creature with you a covenant for all generations. It I have set, excuse me, I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. So this is God and Noah having a conversation because um, Noah was given a word that he 
should build an ark. Now, I know many people have uh, saw the movies on the ark being built. And one of the things that I pulled out is not just the covenant first, but the ridiculing that you go through because you decide to make a choice that is outside of the masses. You make a choice to speak the word of God. You make a choice to walk that fine line. You make a choice to talk to people about something they've never heard before. This isn't just in religion. This is in everyday life. So Noah was ridiculed and he was put in a place where he had uh, he felt bad. You, I mean, you could feel that in, you can feel that in um, the information. So here, what we can find is, is that um, someone is dealing with uh, feelings that other people don't feel because they're not experiencing something that God said, or even idea of um, what they are led to do. Uh, no one is going to give Noah the wherewithal and the confidence that he needs but God at this time. So this covenant is being established by his obedience and how he's going to walk with um, God and not others. Are you a people pleaser or are you going to please the most high? Amen. So Amen. in that, um, this rainbow was given um, between, it says, between me and the earth concerning, uh, look, I put myself in it. I put you in it between me and the earth because we can't create anything in the earth if we are not one with the spirit and that is heavenly minded. So there's a, a equal give and take between spirit and earth that has to come in in order for us to create. That means that we have to believe what we say we believe concerning the spiritual aspects and also bring it down into this earth. So he says in the covenant that um, I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant. Now, the rainbow between you and I, I would think, is that we can move through uh, time and space to work together, which is hard for a lot of people. I don't have you saying, uh, Miss Kim, I don't believe in that. And even if you said you didn't believe in it, I honor your word. You see, we agree and we agree to disagree. It's okay. We don't stay at odds and fall out of relationship covenant because we disagree. This is a building ground to say, let me help you build you up and let you build me up where I need to be stronger. This is a congruent relationship uh, that is necessary, not just for God and Noah, but it's also a, a premises of a story that is necessary for you and I as individuals, which brings the masses into play. The masses did not take on the covenant, but he had to go on. Our covenant, it doesn't end. We continue reshaping each other and that. All right, so on to you. So um, in defining a covenant, the first thing I always have to do is I have to go to a definition, a dictionary. That's my English background. So I opened the dictionary and it says a covenant is an agreement. But then defined in theology, it is an agreement which brings about a relationship of commitment between God and his people. So if you're calling yourself, you identify yourself as one of God's people, you are in covenant with him. But I think one thing that people often forget is that you have to be in agreement with yourself. Now, if you hear the word of God, like Noah says, and he's telling you, I'm going to flood the earth and I, you need to build an ark. You're conflicted at first. Like, what, what do I do? But if you don't come in agreement with, I'm going to follow this and I'm going to do this. And people might look at me like I'm crazy, but I have to do this because I heard this and I believe it and I know it to be true. If you're not in agreement with yourself, then you you're not you can't then say I have a covenant with God because you're not even in agreement with yourself. So I think that's the most important thing and something that people forget where you can't always just step out on faith if you don't agree with that faith within yourself. Hey. And I know personally for myself, I had to learn that. Like, pause, make sure you're sure about this, make sure you agree with it, and then say, I and my father are one. Mm. as long as I'm relying on him and believing on him and, and putting my trust and faith there, then that covenant is walking together. 
that doesn't mean that we don't stray. That doesn't mean because we are humans. It doesn't mean that we don't forget. But you always have to make sure that you come back into that and and focus on that. As you said, we have a covenant with that we work together. I don't always agree with everything you say white when you say it. I'm always sometimes I get a little upset and I can mm -hmm. admit that. And then when I pause and I say, sometimes I say, you know what, that's really just the truth. And I think I was just afraid to hear it and afraid to admit that. Even today I said to you, I'm nervous. And it was a little bit difficult for me to admit that because I don't like to be nervous. But then I said, it's because I care and it's because this is important to me and you are important to me. And I didn't want to do anything to make myself look not okay because that's the agreement I have with myself. But also you inviting me into this. This is something your, your endeavor and I want to best support you. So I had to make sure. And that's a part of our agreement. If I didn't feel comfortable and I said I wasn't, I didn't think I could do it, you wouldn't say, oh, you're letting me down. You would honor me and say, thank you. I appreciate your honesty. Maybe at a later date, you'll be prepared. Right. So I so, think that's a beautiful thing. Good. Okay. So I think it's a beautiful thing too. And one of the words that I want to feed off of is care because the defense mechanism in most people today uh, throughout the issues that they are challenged with if they're going through anything defense mechanisms come up and say i don't care it becomes um a foundation to turn off your feelings and numb them but when god is in the picture and i like to say this here so we can bring some unity and understanding that if there is a god there is a goddess females and males are the portraying aspects of god even in the beginning of uh time uh, there was a male but he he said he was lonely from what we read. So we can't take out the fact that a man and a woman are representatives in the earth. So that means that if I care, then you have to care, right? You don't have to, but I give you that understanding. Why? Because care plus care means that care grows throughout the world and the universe, right? And that means that we have a covenant in care. Right. And if we start looking at how we're making covenants, healthy and unhealthy, then what happens is we'll be able to turn it around. Now, I look at the fact that over in Genesis 8, where the ark information was coming in to Noah was the, the pain and suffering he had to go through. A lot of people, uh, they stop because they're going through. I don't care from other people. Um, the pain, the disappointment, he did not stop, which gives us encouragement in all aspects of life to keep going. You will have to care when you begin to hurt so bad that you feel it in your heart, because that is the circumcision of the heart. The circumcision of the heart is saying no more can uh, this foreskin be over your heart where you don't feel anymore, Noah, Kim, or Ashley. Now you have to care. And that's important because, you know, there are people actually out there that's listening to us that feels you know that they're not cared for or they don't think anyone is listening we listen because we've been through the same things as noah this is somebody else's situation uh out there in uh all over the world that are viewing us right now life is real you know even sitting here in uh, this uh, studio, our virtual studio, life is real. Um, things are happening and all we can do is say, God, I thank you. You know, thank you for what? Thank you for Noah bringing in a story that helps me and encourages me with my family because here we are again with covenant. We have a covenant with our family. We didn't know some of these things. We're learning about a lot of things. Yes, we have to learn to put boundaries up all in teaching, right? Or in uh, our coaching business too. But boundaries were not in the 60s, something that people understood, not even in the 70s. I talk to you all a lot in our leadership meetings and I tell uh, you all, and I'm saying this to the viewers, that sometimes you're stuck because 
you don't know how to go forward. Even though Noah was a subject that's been given or information and story that's been given to people, there is another way to look at it. I say deep calls unto deep. And when deep calls you, it's like Peter has stood out on the beach, right? When you look at this, see, I see the picture. I see the picture of the story. Peter was standing on uh, the beach and Jesus called him out. Okay. I don't want to just read it. I want to see it. Why? Because that's hallelujah. What's going to get me over? How is going to get me into the place where I can see beyond the physical, beyond the shallow. My feelings as an individual that says I'm going to run and not pay attention to what God is saying because of what other people are saying it can have me shut down sick and all type of other things. I prefer to run to God out there in that water, that faith that you brought up so that my faith could grow. My experience, I'm no longer living in a familiar situation. I'm living in the arms of God because now it's unfamiliar to me. I definitely trust you. Now my faith has got to grow some more because God, you're invisible, but hey, baby, you've been the best thing that I've had, right? Amen. When you begin, when you begin that walk with Christ, no, it's not easy, but it's worth it mm -hmm. because it keeps you when you're walking through hard times, it's not something that you pick up and you put down as we can see with Noah again. The rainbow, we see it outside when it's been raining. It comes in and people always, you know, look at it and say, well, God, look, the rainbow is there. But we have went into a place where we understand a rainbow within us. You know, Jesus said the kingdom of God is within if I read only that the kingdom of God is within, I can miss the mark. But if I actually follow the words that Jesus is giving me, I'll find that rainbow covenant within. You know, John and us talked about, I mean, John and me talked about uh, Deuteronomy 5, and that's where your covenant agreement starts. As you speak those things as though they are, that word will take you into another realm, which is what we call the spirit. Many people that I've been in, you know, involved with, they will say, you know, the spirit realm. Well, I call it, it it's God. It's the presence of God. So in the presence of God, there is fullness of mercy and grace. But there's a full color of life. When you think about the rainbow, and even the rainbow has a arc, arch to it. The bridge over troubled waters is found in a rainbow. Rainbow, some people will say, well, you know, that's um, imagination. It sure is because when you're going through uh, hardships and you don't know how you're going to go and you're building your faith, you're building your faith, God is taking you to that rainbow. It's not always mm -hmm. going to stay, but sticking with God and that God is bringing that unity in is what's going to take you over the bridge of troubled waters. All right, I know I said a whole lot here. And I, I just wanted to bring up another point about that rainbow. If you look at it, all those colors, it's balanced and it's equal. And that's something that you, when you're going through your covenant, when you're going through your, your moments where you are in pain, you are struggling, things are being stripped away, and you're looking at God like, what's going on? Why why is this happening? I'm, I'm walking with you and I'm trying to do everything you're saying, but those are the things that are getting away. He's going, you don't need those things. You only need me. And I'm going to show you how to balance these things out. And you're going to see this rainbow, but you're going to see this rainbow within you. And then it's going to reflect outside of you. Amen. And that I think people aura, miss that. Right? Go ahead. I think people, I think people miss that because they see the rainbow outside and they go, oh, that's so beautiful. Not realizing it's so beautiful because it's so beautiful within you too. Mm. Great. And that takes us to the internal aspect because if we look at kingdom building how can you build a kingdom if you're not going within like here when we go back to noah what we find is is that noah is hearing voices that no one else is hearing so that means it's inside of him the intuitive aspects of man and female are not outside we become very con con you know controlled and um program to listen to people, even when we're going through, through things, because, you know, outer situations and things, going to the microwave to put your food in is quick. 
sometimes you got to wait on God. Sometimes mm-hmm. you got to talk to God and keep on asking. Sometimes you got to write it down. Writing it down, uh, that it, because we've been talking and praying about it. Writing it down and talking about it sometimes is not going to be conducive to getting the answer from someone outside of you as much as it is within. Because as we look again at Noah, his information came from within him. You know, even, you know, Moses, every one of these men that we talk about, the information came from within them. And this is something foundational that takes us into that covenant. Because you're going to live in a John the Baptist season, religion, and, you know, then you're going to come into the Jesus season, which is the anointing and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, right? But the mm-hmm. baptism, even Jesus was tempted. Now, in that temptation, he had to learn or show his due diligence concerning what he had learned. Now, why am I going there? Because even he went through testing for the covenant and to be able to build a relationship with 12 other men. uh, Testing. But were those 12 other men, the other idea that I have, those 12 other men were just reflections of himself. Inside, yes. Okay. Inside. So the tests were, though they were physical manifestations in these 12 men, they were really aspects that Jesus had to balance out to, like we said, build that kingdom and then create that rainbow. So, and I think people get very hung up on, and we've discussed this, that people get very hung up on the fact that the Bible is a religious text. And when you really look at it and really begin to understand it. It is used in religion, but it is a text to just guide you into universal love, unconditional understanding, unconditional love, and respect for your fellow man. Because if you treat people the way that you treat yourself with love, kindness, understanding, and grace, and you start to treat, and you really treat other people that way, it's transformational. Yes. Also, another thing that I wanted to bring up is how we speak about writing about it. But the most powerful thing that you've taught me is to walk in gratitude. I got into a place where I wrote down my goals and I woke up this morning. I said, thank you, God, for it's already done. My my wow. the, the things that I'm worried about and that's on my goal sheet, I've already accomplished them. You've already made that agreement with me. That as long as I stay with you and this is something that it, that I've written and I'm deciding it, that it's already done. And I just have to do the steps to get there. Is it going to be difficult? Possibly. Like, I want to lose 15 pounds. I can't do that and eat the same way that I want to and, okay. and not work out. But I got, I, I'm got i making the agreement with myself to eat better and get healthy. And I'm making the agreement with God to say, if I do these things, it's going to get me healthy. And I know that I'm going to rely on you when I feel weak. Because in the midst of my workout, sometimes I'm crying like, God, please let me get through this final set. And he, and I have the energy and I have the strength. So that's bringing it back to the covenant and walking in gratitude. Because I said this morning, thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. I, I love the way you brought in um, your, your agreement with yourself because that's the first agreement. And to even put it in the context of um, you working out, you have to make an agreement with yourself and you have to honor it. You know, it's like as much honoring that we give or to give in, in, in other relationships, whatever it is, partnerships, uh, marriages, and um, businesses, we have to remember that that due diligence is honorable within us. And so from that point of view, um, we look at the rainbow and even the book that, you know, we're writing on. And Maite, um, we can go into Joseph next week, but Maite will be on with us um, next week. And both of you have worked to edit and add in information concerning this book. Um, Some would call it the chakra system. I call it whatever is going to help you to elevate and graduate. Why? Because in the mysteries of the Bible, what God has showed me is that, of course, like Peter, I had to go out into the deep. And I was like, um, Noah, I could not listen to what people were saying. I had to be like Paul and hear what God was saying. Why? Because it was people like you and others that had been waiting to hear 
something that was going to take them deeper. And that deep calls you out into deep. I always tell you all that you are a chosen generation that says, what I give you, you're going to take it and mainstream it further. So the generations, they matter. It's our families. It's you know, who we work with, we mentor uh, our tribes, uh, wherever we go, where there's an agreement that can be made that we can push each other forward concerning the work that God has given us here in the earth, because there's nothing else that you're here to do. Many people found themselves on going to a job and making money. Well, you know what? Sometimes that's not happiness. In this rainbow, the colors, even with the chakra system, which we can talk about a little bit more, what happens is, is that our meditation brings in the medication that we need so that we can heal internally. Because everything that we've done up until the point, I see this generation of you all in your 40s and you know, a, a people that actually are taking it to a place where leaders don't even, they have no clue. So they're running away from you. But then we have that aspect of understanding that we can bring and say, okay, we're talking about the kingdom building. It's not outside. You got to build yourself within before you can build anything outside. So when I start shining, like you spoke of, and that was the aura, all of those colors, you got yellow on, I got turquoise. These are in the rainbow and it's in the chakra system. What happens is we begin to light up and light up the world, you know, light, light of the world. So anything I think with the I think with the chakras before we go, I think people get so hung up on, like you said, identifying it as something and labeling it and everything has to work in a particular way. They all work in a system, but it's a system within, as you said. So if one system within is out of whack, as we know, if your heart is out of out of whack, it's gonna cause problems in other areas, right? And that's just that's just science. If your mind is out of whack, it causes issues with your eyes, maybe with your nose, other areas. This chakra system that is identified by colors, this rainbow within, same way. If one part of it is a little bit, as you in the book, as you define it as not turning the proper way, if there's any blocks, you're going to have areas of discomfort, dis-ease. So you have to make sure that you're identifying and you're going within because something outside of you can't fix that. When I had when I had my issues with learning how to balance using my throat chakra, I had to learn to go within and go, oh, it's time to be quiet now. It's time to rest it because we all need rest. So I think I, I, I'm honest with you. I can't wait to delve more into that and talk more about that because I think people get confused and, and overload it and don't fully understand it and then dismiss it. I want to give some information on how to contact you, like your email um, or what whatnot concerning business grace and documents. Um, let so, me put mine up there. Let me get for mine now, first. Okay, but mm -hmm. just in case for now, if you do need to contact me in anything in reference to business grace, my email address is a. Townsend, which I'll spell, T is in Tom, O-W-N-S-E-N-D, 714 at gmail.com. And remember that I am still doing my birthday fundraiser on Facebook. You can also email me about it at ifwbuilders at gmail.com. And you can also uh, book appointments with us. You can email me about that and then we'll get started. Uh, my website is www.kim warnersworld.com. You can make appointments there as well. Be blessed and we will see you next week.